Hi, and welcome to another tabletop tip of the day. My name is Storm Cook. I'm a artist and a gamer, and today I would like to talk about GM prepping. And I had a situation come up last week where I had a couple of players. I have four players in my game at the moment, and two of them needed to drop out for you know real life stuff. And I had about a day and a half to come up with something else to pivot the game because I wanted to run something for the two other players, especially since Rick um, was the newest player. He had only played one week and I wanted to kind of keep the ball rolling. And it also gave me a chance to maybe craft something around his character. And uh, Neil, who plays the other character, um, was in and this was a chance for their two characters to maybe bond a little bit in sort of almost a solo type game, except it's a duo game, right? Uh Hi, I want to jump in and edit this in because I didn't say this during the, the main stretch there, and that is I am doing a game that is done in a virtual tabletop. I use Foundry. You'll, you, that's where Le the Lycosa map is. And I think the prep that I do might be slightly different than the prep that I would do for a face-to-face -face game. In fact, I think there's probably more prep to do for a face-to-face -face game because I might have to have sheets printed out of NPCs and stuff like that, which... Um, the foundry takes care of. I don't have to deal with that. So, or, or I don't have to deal with it in the same way. So all of what I'm talking about, if you're doing a face-to-face -face game, you have to take this with a grain of salt. Um, but I think it's so similar and there's things to, to be learned and there's a dialogue going between prepping for virtual games and prepping for face-to-face -face that, that I think this is useful. I hope it is. Anyways, back to the show. This is my map of Lycosa, and um, we're, we'll go back to the scabbard page that I started up. So I needed to pivot from that. I'm going to put that off a week. I'm going to have a little interim adventure and wanted something to craft around Rick's new character, Jahan. And this is Jahan. And Jahan is um, a swordsmith and a really good one, and he was run out of his city by the tyrannical king because he was making swords for the rebels. And this has led him to come to Lycosa to start again. And so I knew, you know, from the get-go that one of uh, Jahan's goals was to recreate his smithy and to, you know, reestablish himself as a master swords maker. And he has like three talents. This is a Conan uh, 2D20 game. He has three talents dedicated to smithing. He's a very good smith. And so I wanted to do something that, that, um, was about that goal of the, a long-term goal, a subplot to, you know, reestablish himself as a smith. So when I had to pivot, I decided that I was going to make a metalworks in Lygosa that was run by a woman named Impsy, and she um, she runs you know twenty smiths and apprentices in a workshop, and they do all kinds of things like you know um, everything from horseshoes to spar hooks. It's a nautical setting, so you know things like pulleys and spar hooks are going to be needed, prows perhaps, and they work in bronze, iron, and and steel. And I just called it a metalworks because I I wanted to have it more of like a little guild and and be a place that that would be a setting to sort of spark something out and it worked great so in my prep i mean literally it was one paragraph and and it was mc metalworks jahan needs to make contacts in the smithing world of lycosa zarina knows mc uh Letici by reputation she runs a workshop of about 20 smiths and apprentice on the river just slightly north of lycosa and it's on the map now so let me go back to the map and literally, I, you know, this is my map. And I purposely left wide open spaces. And this is created with Incarnate, um, which is a great mapping website. And um, I actually stole the base, not stole, but I cloned, which you can do in Incarnate. I cloned the base city, which is sort of this area here that I'm, uh, you know, using. That was what I did and so everything on the outside is something that i expanded on and i left myself a lot of room because i knew i'd want to be adding things as gameplay goes so here's the is me uh, metalworks um and you know i put a bridge in there and you know this was one of the little stamp tools that you can create and i was like that's perfect that'll work well 
and and that's basically you know that took maybe five minutes and so then the rest of it of the adventure is so mc has been recently ripped off so i wanted some kind of adventure to come out of the location that they were going and she had delivered some suits of chain some spears and some short swords to a mercenary band called the raven guard and um one of the things that's been happening in the story in the background is that there's lots of mercenary groups gathered in lygosa because there's five royal houses five um pirate houses they were pirates back in you know 400 years ago but come become the you know the rulers of the city since then there's two of them at war and so there's been a a, a huge influx of mercenaries and fighting men and women and you know a need for arms and and, and weapons and armor and stuff like that so this has been a long running plot line in the game this is this has been established in the fiction many many times i just like tailed into that with MC by saying she was supplying one of these ravens uh one of these mercenary groups the raven guild uh raven guard and the raven guard ripped her off they haven't paid so uh jahan needs a a, a new anvil he needs new tools and stuff like that and so i thought this would be a place that they could negotiate if she got her money he would get an anvil or or get paid or something like that so i figured i figured out how much that was and i i made a couple of notes like the captain of the raven guard is romas lapson and the lieutenant of the guard is Gita zern um i never used either of these characters i just wrote them down in case i need them and that's it this is this is my entire prep that I did for my game. Now, I have some advantages because I've been running, this is, I think, my 22nd episode in this setting. Um, it is a city setting, so there's lots of characters that can sort of bump up. And I also knew that, uh, uh, like, at least an hour was going to be taken up by the downtime slash carousing mechanic that is in Conan 2D20, which the players get to roll and do certain things. They get to roll on a table, uh, like the carousing table, that is sort of random events. And they also get to do, like, one thing, which is, like, you know, try to increase the renown or uh, meet with a patron or uh, go gambling or something like that. So there's these, these, uh, so I knew that structure was going to take a little bit of time. So I didn't have to fill up the entire three or four hours that we play with an adventure. I knew that some of it was going to be the downtime. And it was also Rick's first time meeting that um, uh, carousing mechanic. So that was going to take some time to explain to him and, and get him comfortable with it. And um, so for the record, the game worked great. Oh, so I did a little bit more prep too, right? Because I had the Raven's Guard. And let me, let me go back to the, the map here. Um, so I created, uh, let me open up my NPCs here really quickly. I created these guys and... Um, Basically, I actually duplicated them from another sheet. I changed their stats around slightly. I got a new picture off of Pinterest, and that that was my prep for that part. So um, they're actually they were copied from this uh, uh, who I'd used before, and they're they're tough. So in Conan, bad guys come in three flavors. There's minions, which get knocked over like 10 puns as per like, you know, Conan fiction and comics. And then there's the toughs and they're like a step below. So two toughs is a good fight for a player character. And then there's nemesis, which are the equivalent of a player character or even greater than a player character. So these were all toughs. And one of the things that I did is if you take, you know, I can, um, there's all these weapons that I, I sort of dragged over so I can click on these weapons to do certain things and stuff like that. Now, not every single one of them had these weapons. It was just, this was a way of getting it all on one sheet, and that way I didn't have to look them all up. So that was, that was kind of the prep, and I would say I did this in the space of... It was probably 20 minutes looking for maps and writing out what I wrote out. And I didn't even do that all in one stage. I had the scabbard page opened and I would write a little bit and then I would go do something else and I'd come back and I'd write a little bit more. But that's it. That's all I had. And for the record, 
it went really great because literally as they were walking across the bridge, um, Rick, as Jahan said, I want to know, you know, I can see the workshop from here. How is MC running this place? What does it look like? And I said, oh, it's it's barely contra- controlled chaos. She's She is, you know, tearing her hair out and trying to direct, you know, 20 people to do a uh, hundred different things. And there's, you know, ore stacked up and kind of haphazardly over there and tools are spread out and everyone's little workstation is slightly different. And, and he was able to go, well, in my shop back in, in Baz of my hometown, you know, I had the chalk outline around every tool and everything had its place. And so he's already setting himself as being extremely organized and detail oriented. And that though, so when they met, you know, um, Jahan was wearing a sword that he had had made, and she asked to see it, and she was really impressed. And and so there was this interest, and and like the role playing went so well. And I don't know if there were some dice rolls or not. I can't remember, but the role playing and the dice, if there were dice rolls, they must have gone in, in Jahan's favor. It went so well. She offered him a, a workstation. She was like, "You can come work for me. Your stuff is amazing. Love to have you." And so this little bit that I did established everything that I wanted to and more. Like I had a a real sense of place. I had an NPC that they bounced off of and and had a a great interaction with. And it was a friendly interaction. There was no adversarialness in this. And and so there was this sort of support NPC that's grown up around it. Um, It gave Jahan a reason to be in Lycosa. And, you know, Zarina the whole time was like looking at, you know, Neil did a great job with her. He was looking at like the pulleys and going, if I ever have a ship, I want this on my ship, you know, or these spar hooks or whatever, you know, so he was very involved and, and engaged and, and it was great. And then they went and had their adventure. Now, the interesting thing was I forgot to show you that I did set up the Raven Guard camp, found a picture on Pinterest. Um, I didn't feel like going in an incarnate and making one real quick. So on the outskirts of town, Raven's Guard, which is, you know, a little 12 band mercenary group, very battle brothers, if you know the video game, was set up. And they were, you know, I was thinking they would come and either negotiate or steal steal the 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 I forgot of what you call the not the lockbox, but yeah, it's the lockbox. It's, you know, the payroll box of the mercenaries. Or, you know, go in and slaughter them all. I had no idea how the players were going to approach the problem. I just knew that eventually they probably would come to the camp. I was completely wrong. It never happened. So um, the reason it never happened was because they were investigating the Raven Guard and one of the stakes in the die rolls was like, you know, if things kind of go bad on the die roll, word is going to get back to them and, and they're going to kind of know you're coming. So the die roll went pretty bad. And so I very quickly, you know, we usually take a break at like nine and cause we play in the evening. And I said, guys, go take a break. I went on a Pinterest. I found um, this camp, which was supposedly like the outskirts of, of the uh, can of Asar, uh, the caravan Sarai, which is right down here. So they were there talking to people down at the caravan Sarai, and um, so I was like, okay, let me. J- I need a you know a th- scene with tents, and so I did you know fantasy map tents, and this is what I came up with. So the uh, the Ravens guard tried to ambush you know uh, the the our heroes, our duo, du, uh, heroic duo, and and a fight ensued. So I even in the game had to jettison the prep that the little prep that I did. I didn't do that much. I found two maps and one of them I didn't end up using and I had to go and find a third. And and it was great. It was a great little fight scene. Um, our heroes came up on top and uh, then sort of told them to, you know, pay up and took took the armor of the ones that they beat and uh, dragged it back and returned it to MC, and that was sort of the end of the adventure. It was a quick little night. We ended up uh, ending the evening a little early. But I wanted to talk about how you can get away with doing very little prep. And, you know, I mean, certainly for the political situation that I have coming up this week, which I wrote, Last week, um, 
has a lot more to it because there's a couple of speeches that I want to make sure I have nailed down real well. And there's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> there's at least five or six factions and I sort of have a little, but I tend to do bullet points for those. And, and again, try to keep my prep to a minimum and also keep it to a point where there's a lot of room for the players to improvise and do things. And there's a lot of room for me to react to that and then, and then, you know, support what they're doing or make challenges for them or whatever, you know, depending on the dice roll, how the role playing goes, you know, I don't try to sort of, I just sort of present, you know, present situations and environments and then let them react to it and then I react to them and you know sometimes I react to them in the character of the NPCs that are that are in an adversarial position so that's it that's my that's how I do my prep uh, or at least one way how I do a prep. I probably have a few different ways, but this is the one that I use the most and I just wanted to show you and I hope that you got something out of it and that was interesting to you. And, you know, if you like this kind of content, please smash that like button. Please smash the subscribe button. That would help me out a lot. Uh, I'd really like to grow my subscriber base. Uh, that would be great. And, um, you know, also check out some of my other videos. I draw and talk about what I'm drawing. And a lot of times it's role-playing game oriented. A lot of times it's private commissions. So, um, you know, private commissions for role-playing games. So, you know, check it out, please. And, you know, until next time, keep on keeping on. Thank you.